Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, February the 6th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk math. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you have seen the fights, right? I know the subscribers here online are very informed. They're very involved with the sport of boxing. So you have seen Danny Jacobs against Gennady Golovkin. You saw Golovkin knock him down. Then you saw Jacobs get off the canvas, right? Switch to southpaw, start pumping a jab, and you saw him win several rounds against Golovkin. You saw him become the first man to go the distance with Golovkin in several years. And as you waited for the decision in the fight, there was some suspense. Right? I've read many comments here online. Many of you believe Jacobs won that fight. At a minimum, the feeling after the fight was that Jacobs performed admirably. He exceeded expectations. At a minimum, he went the distance with Golovkin. Right? Faced adversity, hit the canvas, got up, had to survive. Right? Golovkin goes after it. This isn't Vladimir Klitschko against Anthony Joshua. Right? Golovkin's not watching him recover. No, Golovkin goes after him. Jacobs has to fight. Jacobs goes the distance. Right? I encourage you to look at the comments to the post-fight video that I made. Right? There's a sizable group of you who felt that Jacobs had outboxed Golovkin. Let's just say Jacobs was competitive in that fight. You've also seen Canelo, the first fight against Golovkin, right? I'm sure you have an opinion one way or the other, right? Was that fight a Golovkin fight? Was it a Canelo fight? I guess there's a third option, and I guess the third option ruled the day. Was that first fight a draw? You saw 12 rounds of it, right? I'll say this. Canelo earned, in my opinion, earned going the distance in the fight, right? Whatever you thought of the fight, Canelo becomes the second man in several years to make it to the end of the 12th round against Golovkin. You know where I stand on that fight. I thought Golovkin won the fight. I thought the draw was a farce. But even from this seat, where I thought Golovkin won the fight, where I thought Canelo's running from the pocket most of the fight and not doing enough in the pocket to win the fight, even from this seat, I'll concede just by going the distance against Golovkin. Right? Canelo gave one of the better performances against Golovkin. You also saw the second Golovkin-Canelo fight. Right? This time, Canelo comes in and he decides he's going to collapse the pocket. He's not the one moving. He's collapsing the pocket. He's throwing a lot of body punches that are landing on Golovkin. Golovkin at times is on his back foot shooting a jab at Canelo. Now I understand, right? Fans are split on that fight. Many of you have Canelo winning the fight. Many of you have Golovkin winning the fight. Let me raise my hand with the latter group. Right As it was, the judges scored the fight in a way where the fight was a close fight. So, now we get to this. And let's think math. Right? Canelo is now fighting Danny Jacobs. You saw both guys against a common opponent. Golovkin. Right? Jacobs also fought Daryevchenko. You saw Canelo recently fight Rocky Fielding. Okay, fine. But you've seen them against a common opponent. They both went the distance against Golovkin. Jacobs gets knocked down. Canelo never gets knocked down. 
right? You understand both of these guys have been champion at middleweight. So let's do some math here because the math will tell us whether or not the betting line being offered from the casino is realistic. So before we get to the betting line, and this is the analysis we should all do before every bet, right? Before we get to the betting line, just off the top of your head to yourself, ask yourself the question, what percentage chance does Danny Jacobs have of winning this fight? Right? That's the question. Now, if you feel the fight's a toss-up, if you feel it's a 50-50 fight, right? Understand, Jacobs at middleweight has destroyed people like Kid Chocolate. Right? If you feel it's a 50-50 fight, then the odds should be even money, right? A plus 100. Bet $5 to win $5 on either fighter, right? In fact, you and I know it's not quite that way. The casino charges a VIG, so let's say it's a minus 110. Bet $11 to win $10, but you get the idea. It should be right around even money. Maybe you think Canelo is favored in the fight. So then ask yourself, does Canelo win 6 out of 10 matches? Do you give Canelo a 60% chance of winning the fight? Right? Well, let's get to the line. I personally feel Danny Jacobs should be favored. Right? He, <laughs> how do I put this? He's the much taller man. He knows how to use length. I don't believe he needs to get deep in the pocket against Canelo. I believe Danny Jacobs is your prototypical boxer puncher. Right? I believe Jacobs, who's ambidextrous, but I don't even think he needs to be ambidextrous for this fight. I think Danny Jacobs can beat Canelo on his back foot. Right? Let me also say, too, I saw Canelo moving forward in the rematch against Golovkin. Then I see Canelo with the same style. In other words, he's not on his back foot, folks. He's on his front foot against Rocky Fielding. So if Canelo decides to not be on his front foot hunting. If he decides to actually box, this would be the first fight in three fights that Canelo does that. Right? Are you positive Canelo is going to be able to switch styles to get back to boxing? And if he boxes, how do you know he's not going to look like he did the first fight against Golovkin, the one that was ruled a draw. If that Canelo shows up, the Canelo from the first fight with Golovkin, not the second fight, but the first fight, do you believe that he has a 60% chance of beating Danny Jacobs? Right? Understand, Jacobs could live behind a jab if he wants. Understand, Jacobs can also fight you in the pocket. Isn't that what he did to Derevianchenko? Well, believe it or not, the casino's not even giving Danny Jacobs a 40% chance. Let me pivot here and just say, you know, casinos really don't make predictions. What they're trying to do is to work yours. In other words, if the public overvalues a fighter, right? if the public thinks the current fighter is Carlos Monzon or Ali or someone like that and prices him that way, well, the casino is going to step in and say, well, why wouldn't we offer 
shorter rides on Canelo. Right? Because the public is willing to pay for the shorter odds. In other words, why wouldn't we offer a higher price, a lower return on Canelo? If that's the way the public thinks about the guy. Let's maximize our profits. You think this $1 ice cream is worth $1.50? Let's charge $1.50. Let's make the extra 50 cents in profit. So, just converting American odds into probabilities. Understand, if the casino thought that in three fights, <laughs> in three fights, Canelo would win two of them. Right? Put differently, if the casino thought that Jacobs only wins once for every three fights with Canelo, then the odds would have Jacobs at a plus 200. Right? Two to one. Two for Canelo, one for Jacobs. That's a plus 200. Believe it or not, the casino <laughs> is actually giving you, as of today, Wednesday, February the 6th, 2019, a plus 210 on Danny Jacobs. In other words, I'm going to walk into a sports book. I'm going to pick the guy who I think wins the fight. The guy I think has the better jab. The guy I think is not going to allow Canelo to get to his body. The guy who I think has a better back foot game than Golovkin. And, of course, the guy who has a hell of a punch. Let's remember, Jacobs is a puncher, right? Boxer, puncher. Think Sugar Ray Robinson. Think young Shane Mosley. Right? This is the guy who's smooth. He's slick. But, as they used to say when selling Colt 45, don't let the smooth taste fool you. Right? So I'm going to walk into a casino. We'll be figurative here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll visit a casino online. But let's say my interaction with the casino is going to involve me. Betting on a fighter I think is going to win the fight. A fighter I think should be favored. And the casino is going to give me odds that would suggest that my guy has a less than one. <laughs> it's, it's laughable to me. A less than one in three chance of winning this fight. To those of you who believe in those long odds on the Jacob side, let me ask a simple question. Do you think Jacobs is going to stand there and allow Canelo to work over his body like Rocky Fielding did? Who's the last fighter who Jacobs allowed to come inside and work over his body? Let me say this too. Years ago, and the, the video is still up here on YouTube, I picked Jacobs' opponent to upset him. And that opponent, Dimitri Pirog, actually did. But understand, Dimitri Pirog was a James DeGale type fighter. Right? He was a guy who could switch righty, lefty, righty, lefty in the middle of a sequence. Right? Dare I say, and I know Canelo is huge right now. I know Canelo is a future Hall of Famer. But dare I say, Pirog was a more complicated, complex fighter than Canelo. Right, folks? Canelo doesn't move that well. Right? He doesn't. Canelo doesn't have that much ring coverage. Let me also throw in something people need to consider. I want you to revisit that Rocky Fielding fight. Right? I want you to think about Roy Jones Jr. Now there was a time when Roy Jones Jr. was the baddest man on the planet, at least in boxing. When you saw Roy Jones Jr., you thought, 
pound for pound the best he was on the list at a minimum right you know you you thought of Roy and you thought my god blinding hand speed years of dominance right victories over people like Mike McCallum Virgil Hill Bernard Hopkins James Tony right Roy had it all together then Roy gains weight goes to heavyweight he beats the heavyweight champion John Ruiz so you knew he was a bad man to begin with now Roy was a bad man in a different division but as you were watching him beat John Ruiz you notice you know Roy didn't look flabby right Roy you know the weight hung on Roy Roy looked good Roy didn't look like a guy with excess water and stuff like that right folks that's probably Roy's last great fight he loses the weight to get back to light heavy then he fights Antonio Tarver who like Danny Jacobs highly skilled <laughs> highly skilled you saw Tarver and for years before Tarver fought Jones you understood oh this this guy got talent this guy can box this guy's a southpaw this guy's a problem isn't that what you're thinking of Danny Jacobs right now so you live long enough you see Canelo years later he gains weight he's fighting Rocky Fielding now understand he doesn't fight Rocky Fielding for the belt at 168 pounds weighing 160 right this isn't Henry Armstrong this is a dude who gains weight he's fighting Rocky Fielding eight pounds right and let's remember boxing's a sport where some guys will show up and fail the way in every pound matters right guys are wearing you know vinyl suits guys are in the sauna trying to make weight every pound matters here's Canelo eight pounds above 160 and when you saw him fight Rocky Fielding you looked at him you saw muscle all over the place right revisit that film the Canelo who fights Rocky Fielding does he have eight pounds to lose does he let me tell you Roy Jones entering the ring against Tarver looked great I'm not even talking about the fight where Tarver knocks him out I'm talking about their first fight because understand knockouts can happen to anyone somebody gets a lucky punch in oh you're on the canvas I believe it's a much more damning indictment if your opponent beats you up for 12 rounds then I know it's not a fluke then I'm watching the fight and I say oh you know wow Roy doesn't look like himself in this first round Roy doesn't look like himself in the second round by the time we get to the seventh and eighth rounds you realize something's wrong now that's different than fights where the guy comes out he's climbing he gets caught cold he's out right those fights just tell me the guy got caught cold those fights might not suggest the systematic beatdown that a uh, fight that goes the distance where your pound for pound guy is getting battered in does so Roy Jones lost the weight looked the same so I'm at the weigh-in you thought oh Roy's ready for this fight isn't he Roy hasn't been himself since the first Tarver fight so controversial they did it again this time Roy gets knocked out fight after that Glenn Johnson Roy gets knocked out before you didn't know if Roy could take a punch right the guy was getting through fights untouched afterwards every fight Roy was getting touched now we have Canelo losing eight pounds I understand 
In the moment, everyone's giddy. Wow, Canelo just signed that big money deal with the zone. By the way, I'm a subscriber. I'm looking forward to watching these fights on the zone, right? I'm not here hating, you know, the big contract. I hope these boxers get every dollar they can, right? I'm all for boxers getting well paid, especially guys like Canelo who sell out Madison Square Garden and, you know, fans are hyped. I myself am watching the fight on TV, right? You have that market share. Hey, get paid. I'm all for that. I'm not hating on Canelo's deal with the zone. I'm not hating on Canelo's fame. I want him to be as successful as possible. But understand, this is a competitive sport. Fighters are human too. I didn't see the eight pounds that Canelo had to lose when he fought Rocky Fielding. He has to lose those eight pounds to fight Danny Jacobs. <laughs> Folks, are you sure he's going to be able to do that and to still be able to perform at a level that will even make this fight competitive? Let's remember, Canelo's not the only person here to go the distance with Golovkin. Danny Jacobs did. Let's remember, Canelo's not the only person here to have the middleweight title. Danny Jacobs has had the title, right? Danny Jacobs has been at middleweight longer than Canelo. So Danny Jacobs doesn't have to get in the pocket. Physically, Canelo has to, right? Shorter reach. He's going to have to what? Do what? Come forward, collapse the pocket. If he stays outside, he loses the fight. He's not going to outbox Danny Jacobs. Understand, too. Canelo fights Miguel Cotto. Right? Cotto is roughly the same size as Canelo. Right? So Cotto had to come inside on occasion. Understand, when you have a height gap, when you have a guy who has a jab, and is going to use it, unlike Rocky Fielding, who decided he was going to try to trade. When you have a guy who knows how to use what I call length, think Vitaly Klitschko, right? A guy who you're fighting and you just can't get close to the guy unless you get reckless. Danny Jacobs knows how to use length then style-wise, I just don't know how Canelo is going gonna, is gonna to be able to bridge the gap on Danny Jacobs. What's he going to do? Try to come in, the, come in the pocket recklessly like he did against Golovkin? Let me say this too. That first Golovkin fight. I was sitting there watching it at a bar. Right? Let me pub the bar here. Hooters, Campbell, California. Great spot to see uh, Canelo fights. So I'm at Hooters, and you know the rest. The first round, the second round of that rematch, Canelo versus Golovkin, I was astonished. I thought, wow, can, you know, who tries to run down Golovkin? It just seemed stunning to me. Canelo made it work. So, for the first half of the fight, I'm talking about several rounds, I was watching the fight and I was like this. I was just astonished. I thought, wow, Canelo was collapsing the pocket? That was surprising. Well, understand, folks, surprises only last for so long. You don't think Danny Jacobs hasn't sat down with the tape of that rematch several times and hasn't pondered the possibility that against him he might face the Canelo who collapsed the pocket on Golovkin and who collapsed the pocket on Rocky Fielding. Folks, you take away the element of surprise here. 
right? You allow Danny Jacobs to have a camp where he actually develops a strategy for over eager and aggressive opponents. Isn't that who Derevyanchenko was? By the way, Derevyanchenko is his regular sparring partner. When you look at him, don't you think of Canelo's strategy in his last two fights of collapsing the pocket? Doesn't Danny have literally a world-class guy to do sparring with in preparation for the Canelo fight? So you marry the style thing, the size gap, the fact that Danny has a stick, can fight on his back foot in a way Rocky Fielding can't, in a way Golovkin can't. You marry that to the idea that Canelo's losing eight pounds for this fight. And then you consider the fact that the casino, <laughs> the casino is giving Danny Jacobs less than a one in three chance of winning. Folks, you add it all up, and as I like to say, this bet makes itself. The play I like here is Danny Jacobs to win. You're getting a plus 210. You can hedge to play with Canelo by stoppage. Let me also invite the public, because I know there are certain fighters, Anthony Joshua, Canelo, where when I say anything, that's outside the public narrative of this fighter is Monzone, this fighter's Ali, this fighter's Lennox Lewis, right? If I say anything that questions any part of the fighter's reputation, many of you will say, gee, you're being too hard on Canelo, etc. Okay, fine. If you feel I'm being too hard on Canelo, if you want to make the case that the two fights with Golovkin weren't competitive, that Canelo clearly won those two fights, and that Canelo is clearly better, clearly better than Danny Jacobs to warrant the betting spread, to warrant the Jacobs side getting a plus 210, then let me invite you to make your case in the comment section of this video. Right? I'm just telling you. Jacobs has a world-class trainer, Rosier. Jacobs has a great sparring partner. Jacobs now has the benefit of the films of Canelo's surprise strategy in that Golovkin rematch. Right? Even with the surprise, you know where I stand. I thought Golovkin won the rematch. I understand. Many disagree. Fair enough. Right? This is a sport. We get to disagree. I'm all for it. Right? But please, let's not ignore the red flags. Right? If you heard that James DeGale was going to lose 8 pounds to fight at 160, or Callum Smith was going to lose 8 pounds to fight at 160 against Danny Jacobs, would you have any hesitation? Would there be part of you who thought, wow, eight pounds, that's a lot. Jacobs is a dangerous man at 160. Would you go to the casino and then expect Jacobs to be getting a plus 210 as an underdog? I consider this to be a casino mispricing. I actually think this might be a better play than a fight I'll talk about in a future video, Mikey Garcia, who I expect to beat Errol Spence. Right? But that fight carries more risk than this fight because there, Errol Spence isn't losing eight pounds before he fights Mikey Garcia. That's exactly what Canelo is doing here. Folks, it's not that easy. I know many of you are going to say Canelo was a middleweight before he gained weight, and so he can lose the weight, right? Tell that to the Roy Jones people. I'm talking about a guy who was dominant. 
dominant. Then he gained the weight. Hasn't been the same since. Those are my thoughts. I like Danny Jacobs to win this fight. I'm going to hedge to play with Canelo by KO. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.